We've come to the video that I've been dying to do since the beginning of the series, how to fix the fucking raids. For eight videos now, everything I've mentioned in these videos have had a direct or indirect impact on what would happen in the raids. From all the nuances to the loot system, currency system, gun evolution system, exotic bounties, aura rating on the armor that I just did two weeks ago, it all leads here to the best part of the game. Now before I dive into the content, I want to mention a few things right up front, and I've said this in almost every video when it comes to the raid. They are the best part of Destiny. Part of that is the rest of the game is crap. <laughs> Part of that is that the raids are actually the best use of all the game mechanics and teamworks that we gave us. You know, I could do the campaign and shit solo without any help. I can't do the Vault of Glass alone. I can't do Crota alone. Although I know some people have solo that motherfucker, but it's not meant to be done alone. This is the best use of co-op with friends that you will find in Destiny and the most challenging shit outside of fucking Nightfall. Although raids eventually get easier over time with enough practice and runs of the motherfucker, overall, it's the most unique challenge in the game. That being said, it has issues. Man, do raids have issues? And that's not even including the glitches and whatnot. From the reward system, to the party system, to the challenges themselves in the AI, I think small and large improvements can be made. All the videos that have come before this one have pretty much detailed what changes I would make in the raid. Now, before I begin, I have to say this. I will never, ever agree with matchmaking in the raid. Initially, I thought it was stupid of Bungie not to provide this. I mean, we have matchmaking and strike missions, so why not the raid? Who gives a fuck? Why are solo players limited to shit outside of the raid if they can't find a party? Why are they restricted to only parties and why must people rely on LFG type websites to get parties going into the raids? Because raids don't need assholes, that's why. <laughs> Having to carry one or two people is pretty much a death sentence to your evening. What should take only 30 to 45 minutes will now take an upwards of two hours with incompetent players. Not to mention, there is the matchmaking process itself. What happens to someone who gets booted? You know, because these servers are so fucking fantastic. <laughs> What happens to the person that thought it would only take 45 minutes, yet he's stuck on an asshole team that's now three hours into the fucking raid and they can't get past the goddamn Gorgon maze? So they leave. Does that mean someone else gets thrown in their spot? Do I really want to get thrown into a room in progress only to get Atheon rewards when I need the whole fucking raid? If I went into matchmaking needing an entire raid and I only got thrown in for Atheon, I would be pissed. I need all the rewards, not just the ending. So when it's time to fire up a full raid, do I stick around for Atheon? What if the team is struggling? Do I stay to help? Do I back out and hope someone gets put in the same exact spot that I do? It's not a great idea. I do not agree with randomized matchmaking for the raid. However, what I do think the game needs is a meeting place for teams to form up and do whatever the fuck it is that they want. Instead of being placed on a random team, there should be a place in the tower, and I think a good place for that would be that lounge close to Dead Orbit in the future World Cup, motherfucker, where people could end up meeting looking for a group. Instead of getting a random team through Matchmaker and having to go to a website, there should be a section of the game that allows people to form their own team with their own LFG mechanics. Put an ad or something in the tower. Those who want to hook up can do so. You can check the profiles of players to see what they're rocking, what stats they are to determine, if you want to team up with them. Personally, this mechanism should have been in the game from the very beginning, but it hasn't. It's lacking, and it's sorely needing instead of matchmaking. Now granted, people can set up their own teams through their own voice chat in the tower and fight people, whatever the fuck you want to do, but that lounge area would be more in-depth and more thorough as to how to set up a team instead of a random group of assholes sending an invite hoping you to join them for the vault or the hellmouth. You could put out an ad saying you want to just do Atheon, you want to just do Crota, it's going to be on normal, it's going to be on hard, it's going to be from a checkpoint, going to have a Gallahorn, going to have this, it's gonna have whatever the fuck you want. It could be exactly the same way LFG sites are set up. Only now you can do so in the tower without having to fire up a computer, a PC, your Mac, whatever the fuck, going over to a website, using an app, and trying to find other people. Now you have the mechanic in the game. You no longer rely on outside sources. You can find a party of six who you want to join, and then you can go take on Crota. Then you can go take on Atheon. Do whatever the fuck it is you want. That's what this game really needed. With that being said, Let's get on to the raid itself. And one of the biggest changes that I would make is the ability to change the content weekly after the reset. Not a lot, not drastic changes, but I feel like the raid needs just a touch more variety to feel unique. You know, things like changing the position of the confluxes around the map, whether you'll have to defend or whatever the fuck. Instead of the same three spots, move the position of the confluxes per week to add a challenge. Randomize the Gorgons a bit more. Have Atheon's portals switch locations so that the portal on the right will be Mars every now and then, or randomize which portal people will come back to really fuck with things. Oh, you got all kinds of ideas that you can do for this. 
on hard mode, you can add another modifier, like light switch one week, angry another week, anything but the burn damages, change up the flavor a bit like that. Have the step puzzles be a bit more random, and now the content doesn't feel the same each and every week. Granted, these are not massive changes, but it's enough to make it feel like you're not just running the same exact shit over and over and over again. Crota's Raid could be exactly the same. Changing the spacing of the lamps in the abyss or something like that. Alter where the knights pop out of or where the ogre will attack from. Change the modifier each week to something to make people feel like this is something new each and every time. Now remember video number three? Do you know how annoying it is to do the same repetitive shit over and over and over again? At least with the raids. You can add some form of weekly change to the motherfucker to make it feel just a little bit different. Again, not a shitload. We're not talking massive overhauls here, but just a touch difference to what we have right now. Now, the number one reason why people play the raid itself is for the gear. Players wanted to be level 30 and now level 32, and the only way to get there was constantly raiding in hopes of getting random drops. I didn't get my characters to level 30 until the 13th week of the raid, and that was after running hard raids for a shitload of the time, and even then, I needed Warlock boots from the Iron Banner 2.0 just to get me there. Fuck that, man. I am changing that shit. Personally, I like the idea of Eris Moron. <laughs> oh, that chick is a moron. Personally, I like the idea of having a different vendor or messenger for Crota or shit like that. So, I would expand on that to other characters. I think raid gear should be a purchasable item from a vendor. Eris for Crota gear, maybe the speaker or someone new for the Vault of Glass gear, unless you have another vendor, whatever the fuck it is. I mean, that Tess Eris chick at the front counter, she doesn't do shit. Maybe she could be the raid gear vendor for the Vault of Glass, ah, whatever. A vendor's needed, you get the idea. Now, people might think, what would be the point of raiding if all you need to do is buy all the shit? Well, that's another change I would make to the raid. Right now, you can run through a raid and you walk out of there with the same exact shit that someone what else you just carry through that motherfucker can walk out there with? If I killed 100 enemies, yet somebody else takes 27 fucking attempts at jumping down the disappearing steps, that's pretty fucking stupid. That he could walk out of the raid with a full set of raid gear, meanwhile, I get shards and a nice big fuck you. I'm gonna tell him right now, fuck you, Dusty. <laughs> oh, that motherfucker, we carried him and he got all his damn ring. I ain't gonna get into that shit, I've said it before. In any event, here is how to fix all that. The raid has different sections, correct? Much like how public events award you a gold, silver, or bronze rating, the raid section should do the same. So let's take this for example, the Vault of Glass Confluxes. If you defend all the Confluxes without a single sacrifice, that's a gold rating. However, if you personally die while the team manages to do it flawlessly then, then they will get a gold rating and you will get a silver rating. If the team has to wipe or you get expunged, then nobody gets a gold and you will all get no better than a silver medal. After two wipes or sacrifices, then it drops down to a bronze. When you get past the confluxes, you'll be rewarded with a medallion or something which correlates to your rating. Now, the death part does sound a little bit harsh, but let's be honest here for a second. Sometimes, death is not your fault. There have been plenty of times people didn't pay attention to fanatics coming out of their zone who end up walking on me, blowing up, and I take a death. That's not my fault. Obviously, I take the penalty for that, but I think people who fall into that scenario should at least have chances of getting back to a gold status. The game should measure how many kills and important kills you're getting, such as Minotaurs or the Yellow Shielded Harpies, enemies that are about to sacrifice and how many kills you got in close proximity to the Confluxes. The basic idea is that for each section, your team and individual contributions will be measured. And based on how well you do and how efficient your team is, then you're rewarded with a medallion of equal value. The medallions in their hard raid will be doubled, obviously, if you didn't do the normal raid. So if you did the normal raid and then you did the hard raid, you'll receive medallions for both. Similar to how we receive loot drops right now. Should your entire team make it through the raid flawlessly, in other words, the flawless raid or trophy, you will receive a platinum medallion for your efforts. Of course, that means the vault of glass would have to be fixed now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Oh, the fucking glitches in that motherfucker, man. Ah, you guys saw the video. You saw that shit that I went through. But anyways, after you collect your medallions, you can return to the tower and visit the vendors. Eris will have Crota gear, while Tess Eris or someone else, whoever the fuck I mentioned, they will have the Vault of Glass gear. The value of your medallions will need to be added up. So, a bronze medallion might be worth one point. Silver might be worth two points. Gold might be worth three points. And let's say a platinum would be worth ten points, because obviously if you just did a flawless fucking raider, that shit is hard as hell. And since you collect multiple medallions, you'll have at least four to five bronze medallions minimum 
after one run. So each piece of raid gear is going to have to be quite pricey. Maybe it'll be 10 medallion points, 15 medallion points, 30 medallion points, whatever the fuck. It'll be a higher amount that ensures that you need to do quite a number of raids and that you don't just get your gear in all one day. So let's say you run your raid with your Titan. You get a platinum. You do your whole flawless. However, to purchase your boots, it would cost you 15 medallions. So basically, you have to go back and do it all over again. Maybe the helmet will be a little bit more expensive than the chest armor. So the helmet might be worth 20, chest armor might be worth 10. Whatever the case may be, you'll basically have your chance to buy your gear. Now the medallions though, are still subject to Bungie's weekly reset. So if you have three gold and one bronze medallion for the week, you can't go in tomorrow to hopefully get that gold challenge. Basically, you got a bronze challenge for the week. So let's say everybody fucked up on the Templar fight, you ended up having to wipe, you ended up having to wipe a second time because people couldn't get their shit together. You ended up with a bronze medallion but all the other parts you got your shit together and you walked out of there with three medallions whatever the fuck it is that's what you're going to be stuck with for the week there's no going back and trying to get that gold just in that one section you now have three gold medallions one bronze and you have to wait until the weekly reset in order to try and go for more medallions now seeing that bungie loves rng and random shit <laughs> the other thing that i would do is a weekly reset of the armor Think about this for a second. Right now, you could get something out of the raid with random stats. High intellect, high strength, a split between discipline, strength, whatever the fuck. There's no logic as to what you get. Well, with the vendors, I would do the same randomizing of the stats. This week, Eris might sell the Titan chest piece with all discipline. Next week, she might sell a helmet that splits intellect and strength. And the one thing that vendors won't do is sell everything in each week. The vendors will probably only have two pieces of raid gear each week, rotating the pieces out as needed. And again, the only way to purchase your gear is through those earned medallions. Now, I'm sure there are people who would think this cheapens how to get higher ranked as a motherfucker, but remember in a prior video, I introduced the aura system, right? In a prior video, the light levels were removed from all your gear. So why would I bother with raid gear if I can automatically get 10 aura and put that on all my other legendary gear? It's simple. Raid gear will have the best and most perks for any legendary armor. Now, as I said in the aura video, you could get up to eight perks on an exotic armor, only choosing four, right? The legendaries would probably only have three perks with the ability to choose only two items. Well, with raid gear, I would give people five perks, and the perks would be more geared towards raid ideas, like more damage to oracles, spawning an orb, meleeing this type of enemy, whatever the fuck it is. Essentially, raid gear would have more options than a normal legendary gear. So the idea that your raid gear equals vanguard gear isn't exactly accurate because raid gear will always have an advantage when it comes to the perks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I ain't done yet when it comes to ideas on the aura. Remember what I said when you would have to earn 10 pieces of aura in order to put on your armor? There would always be a challenge that unlocks a piece of aura. Well, guess where at least one of those aura would be located? That's right, motherfuckers. In the raid itself, to earn a new piece of aura that you would be able to use to upgrade all your armor, you would have to complete the raid 25 times start to finish with no breaks in order to get it. Now that sounds like a lot, but then again, what part of this game isn't about grinding? <laughs> the game isn't hard, it's merely grinding, and this is another way to add to that bullshit without people being obsessed over the same random fucking drops that never happened. Basically, all the changes I have made in the game up to this point have now translated over to the raid. The difficulty models, the currency models, the rewards itself, skilled players having to shirt for lower level players, and showing the impact that aura will have on the raid gear. All the ideas that I've had so far have now come full circle with Destiny's best end game content. That's how shit should have worked this entire fucking time. I swear, man, someone over at Bungie needs to be writing this shit down with a notepad or something. So pull your head out of your ass and figure out a way to get all of this shit done. But anyways, nine videos down and the next one is gonna tackle my most hated part of this entire game, the Crucible. Oh, the Crucible, you knew this motherfucker was coming. <laughs> so anyways, that does it for this video. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in the next video.